Go Welcome ahead. everybody to Fishgistics. Of course, this is a live tracking page that you can use during the races. Fishgistics is a service that uh, provides racers that hire them with uh, information during the race and also provides updates, news, and videos during the race times uh, for popular races. My name is Cameron Steele. We're at the Baja HQ. It's an off-road shop where you can uh, get all your aftermarket goodies. Of course, it's a place that I own with my buddy Brandon Pjork. I'm stoked to be here on Fishgistics with our good buddy Austin Farner, who is fish this is his program and his setup and next to me cameron's my, best friend oh my boy. sometimes nemesis <laughs> my one-time partner and uh, a guy that really was instrumental in getting me into the trophy truck racing and uh, now we're just mostly enemies pistol pete soren also the star of if i'm not mistaken one of the top 10 tv shows on cable networks in the United States. Is that true? With Pete on it. Truck Night in America every Thursday night, which is tonight. Uh, check it out. It's five competitors duking it out for $10,000. And uh, it's a great show. It's a family show. It's for everyone. Truck Night in America on History Channel. And I have to tell you this. I spent some time uh, watching the show. I'm actually pretty engaged with it. I like it. But what was really cool for me is that my daughter watched it with me. She had a fun time. And uh, I caught her later at six years old, searching for it and getting it on the television on her own. Heidi and I walk in and our six-year-old daughter is watching Chuck Knight in America. So you're, you're influencing our daughter, so be <laughs> careful what you say. Yeah, good. We try to keep it a clean show for everyone because uh, Jason McNeil, his son, Connor, is a diehard Chuck Knight watcher as well. And my mother and her bridge ladies also watch it, so it kind of... It's a show for everybody. It's it's a truck show, but it's a competition and personality show. So we are going to have some people join us today to talk about the Baja 500. The course map has been released by SCORE. Another amazing looking job by SCORE International coming up with some interesting routes and some changes that maybe some of us didn't expect. We're going to have guests Andy McMillan, your winner from last year's Baja 500, of course a perennial favorite, and many people's pick as the greatest of all time. If you haven't been involved with that conversation, we can also extend that here today. Dan McMillan, who likes to finish fourth place or better in all races. I think actually at San Felipe, he finished sixth. And uh, he'll be with us today on the panel as well. Of course, they are not brothers. They are cousins. Just getting that straight. The other cousin, Luke McMillan, once again, couldn't make it. He snubbed us for some unapparent reason. But he's it's going okay. to Tahiti or something this time, probably. I have this. Banned. I have this. He's now banned from our show forever, <laughs> Luke. If you're out there watching, <laughs> so we're going to get into the topics of the race a little bit later. But I do see on the early start list because not everybody has entered the race yet. It shows Luke McMillan's second start position, which actually will be the number 16 start position. But I'm right here to offer this to you, Luke McMillan, if you happen to be watching. For twenty thousand dollars, you can have my start position, and I'll race with you in your truck. So just, wow. just putting that out wow. there just to see if I can get you to jump. Does that sound like fishing? Yes. I don't think he's doing that. I don't think I would do it either. I think if he had DNF'd, maybe he would. He might he do it if he doesn't it, have to You know, if he had to start in the back. Oh, you don't think he'd let me drive his truck? No. Because <laughs> the 500, he, he's, he's on the cusp of winning. And when you're at that point, you're not going to put anybody else behind the wheel. What you're going to drive What are you going to say we're at then? But we're he beat him last slope. race. We're on the down slope? <laughs> just so you, just we're you I'm know. past my cusp. I'm talking about me, not you. you oh. We already know you're yeah. happening. You <laughs> no. have a mullet. It's great. <laughs> oh, you're all on my TV, money. Acting silly. You're done. You're on. The yeah. I've spent all my money. I have no more. Okay. So. Also in the crew here today, we have uh, Travis Clark, of course, who's a part of the Fishistics effort. He's behind the camera. Heidi Steele's here. And some of the Baja HQ people in the house as well. So, uh. Before we get any further along, a uh, hard part for me is I'd like to uh, spend a few minutes talking about our good friend Jake Petulis, uh, who passed away recently. Um, really tough for us. Jake is an icon in this industry. He was an artist with his hands. He uh, came from San Clemente as a youngster and actually started up. I'm not sure if it, was, it wasn't his first off-road job, but he prepped our race cars. And back in the days when we were Stars and Stripes racing, uh, Jake and I got to win races together with Brandon Pjork and all of our a uh, little San Clemente Circus from way back then. And uh, Jake uh, had incredible skill, and unfortunately he's no longer with us. And, you know, we're uh, deeply saddened by this. We're thinking about his family. He leaves behind uh, three boys um, who, uh, you know, all have their different styles and all love their daddy. And uh, Jake was involved with all three of their lives very heavily. And uh, we're, we're really feeling the pain for them right now. 
Um, we're going to be giving you guys the GoFundMe information. Um, I'd love to see people pledging here on Fishgistics to support um, the Batulas family. And um, I'd want to say something yeah. about Jake. Jake, in a sport where we're all type A personalities and we're always maybe not nice to each other or other people because that's the kind of people we are, Jake drove like a type A personality guy, but he wasn't. When he was, wasn't behind the wheel, he was just a great guy. Uh, I met him when I first started racing with Cameron. And even after I fired Cameron, Jake was always a friend. So uh, Jake was a great guy, and he, he was going to be missed by all. And Jake's artistry, you know, transcends uh, many different classes. His favorite build, maybe, I don't know, but one that I really think about all the time is a 12 car he built with Brandon uh, with the Lost Graphics on it. Of course, he was involved heavily. With Dave Hendrickson in the early, early years in 1600, he's been a part of Clyde Stout's team, uh, built race trucks and race trucks with Clyde, and of course uh, with B.J. Baldwin more recently. And uh, Fish has come up with the help of Jeff Jeff Lothinger um, with some photos. Uh, we're going to play a, a video of photos of, in memory of Jake, and then we'll come back and uh, talk about other topics. But uh, much love and Godspeed, Jake.
I don't know about you people, but for us, it's very hard to watch because Jake was our good friend. And if you're not a person that likes GoFundMe to, to donate, uh, Fish will put up a post on Fishistics that you could send checks here to Vaha HQ in, in care of Jake Petulis, and, and we'll make sure he gets his family gets the money. Uh, yeah, hard to watch. Yes. You know, uh, definitely. Uh, Jake is a young man, but he was like us. Our lives, the way we live them, they don't always end up like we want them to. But uh, from the pictures, it definitely looks like Jake uh, lived life to the fullest. And you saw there at the end, the uh, memorial for Jake will be at Doheny State Beach on the 16th. Friends and family invited to uh, come and join. And uh, it's going to be hard. A lot of years. There'll be a lot of people there, I'm sure. You know, a lot of people that he touched. And, um, you know, just from great fabricator to amazing race car driver to great father um, and just good friend. A lot of people... Um, really enjoyed Jake, and he's uh, he's truly going to be missed. Yeah, for sure. Everybody that you know, obviously he was prepped by Jake. That was that was his business, and and I see that sticker everywhere when I'm in Baja. Actually, and I was uh, thinking of it's now that you mentioned that. I wanted to say something. Brand and I have been talking about um, a way to memorialize Jake and uh, on our own style. And I think what we're going to do, and I wanted to talk to his family about it first, which we haven't had the chance, but. I think we'd like to make the Baja HQ every April 27th, the day that Jake passed away, be prepped by Jake and all the proceeds from the shop that day go to his family. And, um, you know, I think that we just want to, you know, make an effort for where people can, you know, remember Jake. And, and no one's ever going to forget him, that's for no. sure. Yeah. No, we won't. <laughs> so, uh, super hard transition from something like that. Yeah. Um, much love and respect to Jake's family, all of his friends. Um, we're going to, uh, carry on the way I think Jake would want us to and go racing and do what we do. Talk about uh, some Baja racing. Talk about some Baja, which, uh, of course, uh, we all love. And we have some great guests here today. Obviously, Pete has a wealth of knowledge. I'd like to think I'm pretty knowledgeable. Fish? I'm just not, working the computer. We're not really here. too sure about. But <laughs> the next guy we're going to bring in right now to join us to start talking about the Baja 500 is the winner from 2017, the driver of the uh, Red Bull Method Toyo Tires. Number 31, Andy McMillan. Come on in, Andy. Yeah. All right. Oh, the crowd's going wild. The crowd's going wild. What's up, boys? What's up, Andy? How are you, bud? Good to you. I'm good, thank you. Pistola. Good to see you. Come on, Stas. It's tough watching that clip of Jake. Yeah, yeah it really was. Friend. Um, you know, I didn't know Jake, you know, too well personally. Uh, met him a couple times out of the desert testing Clyde Stout's truck. Um, you know, was that 2006, seven, probably? And then, uh, and you know, just seeing the prep by Jake stuff all over. I remember him racing his 12 car. Um, you know, just when you guys are saying about him, when I know about him, he's a great guy. Um, you know, very, very sorry. Um, very sad to see him go. And, uh, you know, went out, you know, doing what he loves to do. And uh, I think that's, you know, I think if any of us were going to have a choice on, on the way we want it to happen, you know, um, doing something that you love is, is definitely, you know, it's definitely a way to do it. Um, but yes, yeah, so just send all my condolences to his family, all his friends, you guys. Um, I know it's really tough uh, uh, losing a close friend. Um, so he's thinking about everyone. For sure. We appreciate that, Andy. And uh, a very somber mood here, but I, I think we've got to change gears. we got to talk about driving fast, pounding the bumps. And uh, let's talk a little bit first about <clears throat> last year how that went, the plan. I mean, it seemed, yeah. it seemed like it went perfect for you. Yeah, if you win, was, it goes uh, perfect, right? I wasn't very happy course. about it, to be honest. But. It happens. <laughs> I know. I've been in your shoes lots of times, trust me. Um, <laughs> now, the last year was a good race. Um, <clears throat> we, we had qualifying last year, and I qualified fifth, which uh, is a pretty ideal spot uh, at the Baja races. That's uh, what I want to ask you, too. Now, <clears throat> this time, you're starting fifth? Fourth. Fourth. Uh, would you rather start first? To me... When I raced trophy trucks, I started first a few times, and it's pretty sketchy when you're up front. Yeah. I know people think, clear oh, the I always want to be first with no dust, but down in Baja, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I last year, I don't, I don't know if I ever started first in Baja, actually, before. I've I been started first, first in your truck in 2005 at this race, at the Baja 500, with Jason Baldwin right behind me. There you go. That was, a, that was quite a battle. <laughs> yeah. Jason and I ended up going door-to-door. Nice. Smashing a little bit. He wasn't very happy with me. <laughs> but um, 
it was a great race, and I'll always remember that. You know, yeah. Black Condios, Jason, um, <laughs> think Jason about him at times as well. He was a hell of a competitor. Yeah. But the Baja 500 brings it. And I, you know, one thing I will say, starting second. Um, I'm Where not, would you like to start? Where would you be if you got, if to, you got pick to pick your starting yeah. spot? Would you second, pick first? Second to fifth is where I would probably pick. What do you think, Andy? Where would you pick? Yeah, I like I like third, fourth, fifth, yeah. sixth, somewhere in there. You know, not not too close to the front because because most people don't know uh, when you start out front. Yeah, you think it's great, it's dust free, but the spectators, the locals, don't know. That the race is coming necessarily. Well, it's that, nice. We're, we're going to get into that. Go ahead, Andy. I know you're going to start. <laughs> go ahead, no, say, no, it. say it. Say unless you have a helicopter. But still, <laughs> oh, helicopter. it helps. But still, when, this, when the helicopter comes over, all the spectators yeah. don't know the lead truck is coming. True. The, they, they don't. The, the experienced ones know. The ones that have been going down yeah. there. Yeah, maybe they think it's just a spectator that's not helicopter. The ones that are still driving after their spot. Totally. Those In case are the you're ones wondering, there is a bit of a heated debate going back and forth on social media between Pete, Andy. I'm involved, Dan's involved, all kinds of people. It's like a whole bunch of guys against me. Everybody's <laughs> the, well, the Pete's the only one without the helicopter. In case you guys are wondering, uh, it's usually everybody against Pete. It's just the way it is. And it's the same here at Fish Logistics. But <laughs> um, back to last year before we start talking okay, about start yeah. positions and all that. Yeah. Um, we raced, and we raced well. I think we started ninth. Yeah, and uh, we guys... raced up through the pack. Coming out of Mike's, we were in the top four. Right. And so I made a decision there because you were first. Yeah. Robbie was second. And yeah. I think we were third going out of San Matias because I believe we passed Kyle LaDuke, who had just pulled into his pit after coming down the Mike's road. Gotcha. Um, so I I made an engineering mistake by saying, okay, I, I feel like we have a superior truck to Rob here. Let's get him in the bump so we can trail Andy because I didn't want to – trust what rob was going to do yeah because if we if we just keep staying on the engineered plan it would have been to stay behind robbie right and then he would have had and robbie, close enough. what a lot of people don't know robbie is a lot smarter than he seems robbie goes slow because on purpose to go, back yes, everybody he goes up slow on purpose yes to keep people behind him he doesn't care if they get closer as long as they don't pass him he can check out whenever yeah, he wants he can, yeah. when it comes time to get it on he can get it on so he he likes it when he bunches up people behind him and let them take themselves out. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So last year we, does happen. we started fifth and we got by Bean with an issue uh, on the way to European to the beach. Got by Bryce in the pit. He had a pit earlier than than anticipated because of uh, some engine issue or something he was having. He wasn't getting the fuel mileage. Um, I feel sorry for Bryce. Two. <laughs> there was two. Oh, and Pudia was broken with a blown engine right after Santa Tomas. So then it was just BJ in front of me, and then BJ made a mistake coming out of Mike Sky Ranch. Um, took a took a, a crest too hot, hit a bank, rolled it on its lid. He was right on his lid, right by Mike's, right? Yeah, in the middle, right of the in the middle of the race course. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's and, a tough section right there. I've gotten a little out of control there. There's yeah. those rollers, and they kind of yeah. And you're this right on top of the, right on top of the ridge. It was a crest, and then it was a hard left right around. Right, well, right really at that hot. post right there. I mean, it's one of those traditional spots going up. It's not that big a deal, but right. not that many times that we race coming down all right. the way from Mike's. Right. So it's a little bit tricky because you get it in your head that like usually when you're racing, you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost to Mike's. I can yeah. really like trust yeah. to get on it. But going right. the other way when those those hills are dropping yeah, way you're more. Yeah, not super familiar with it. Way more tricky. Yeah, yeah. you're not familiar with it. And so we, we passed uh, BJ there, got first on the road. I was battling a cold all week, so kind of the, the altitude kind of got to me a little bit. I was a little – I was a little uh, – Woozy up there uh, for some weird reason. Did you throw up in your helmet? In my sinus? No, I didn't throw <laughs> up. But no, every time my co-rider has thrown up in a race, I've won that race. It's yeah. happened three times. Won all three races. So well, throwing up Brady is a good thing be throwing in my up truck. this race. Brady, please throw up. <laughs> um, and then we started the. the gnarly... I got some uh, anti nausea pills for you, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> then we started the the gnarly San Felipe loop, um, and we were running really good. And then I I. I Got a sidewall and uh, and some bushes up past uh, up past San Felipe, heading north. And I just lost the mint race, the race before that, when I jacked the truck up and the jack buried in the sand. It took us five minutes instead of two. Lost by two minutes. Lost like five positions on the track. So I was like, "Hey, we're leaving the race. We were close on time with Ricky Johnson in Team C truck. Cameron was right there. Um, I forget who else was right there. Otavo was there." Um, and so I was kind of picking it up on the, on the San Felipe loop, the open desert section, got a flat. <clears throat> we had a pit like three miles up the road 
And if you've ever driven a race truck on a, on a bad flat, you know that it's not very easy to do. And so did you drive to the pit? I drove to the pit. Oh, made wow. a decision. I'm like, hey, we lost the race changing a tire in the sand last race. So I'm not going to do that again if something goes wrong. Front or rear this time? Right rear. Right. Yep. And uh, made it to the pit. They checked the brake lines, make sure nothing was broken. Thankfully, didn't cut anything. Because that's the worst thing is once you run on a flat, then you rip the bedside off and you yeah. rip off the brake yeah, line and cause... you damage the... So that was, yeah. you know, that was your thing. drama, but right. after that, you still... But you made the decision. The road? Yeah, stayed first on the road. Robbie was right behind me again, like tied on time. Matty was right there on time. Uh, come to find out, Rob made up a buttload of time on me in the San Felipe loop, like seven or eight minutes, just had some good lines or something down there or just drove really, really hard. Um, and then, you know, coming back into the finish line, um, we were able to, to close the gap and actually Rob had me by a minute coming back, uh, and through Mike's road up the goat trail. And then, uh, and then I put the pedal down. Sun was going down, a lot of bike traffic, a lot of dust. I think I caught the bikes in a good spot. Rob might've got them in, in the, in the tough spots where it was dustier and, uh, and we were able to come away with the win. So, Last year's race was, race was great. Um, this course is, is kind of similar. Um, a lot of the similar sections uh, that we're doing, just in different roads. Um, Something that is different for this year, though, is you're working with one of your sponsors, and you're going to do some pre-race videos with Fishistics. I believe it's with Toyo, right? Yes. You guys are going to do some safety stuff. You're going to do some other stuff. You're big on safety there after San Felipe. Yes, sir. Maybe explain a little bit about And you're going to preview different sections of the course? Yeah, so we're going to do um, – we're going we're to bring a cameraman along the pre-run truck. And then at the at the cool spots, you know, some scenic spots, we're gonna shoot some stuff and, and talk about it. And then also the uh, the the spots with a lot of spectators and traffic in them to raise awareness for the racers, you know, the guys with not as much Baja experience, let them know um, what sections can get hairy with the spectators and, and where to watch for spectator traffic and, and people standing close to the course. And then, you know, potentially some areas, um, you know, like at, at San Felipe where there's multiple lines and, and where to watch out for, for the trucks, maybe not coming on the mark course, maybe coming on a, on a, on a different line. Um, like you and I were hoping that where score knows there's going to be big spectator areas. We're, we're hoping they add more VCPs. Right. To make it so yeah. we're on the course right. where the spectators are waiting for us well yeah. while we're going to transition so you you're talking about what you guys are going to do let's uh, go ahead and bring in our, our next guest as well since we're going to start talking our course about, expert our course expert <laughs> yeah. um, talking baja 500 let's bring in dan do Jones. a safety check there on that chair is yeah, it looking all right there you guys good. didn't know uh, there was a little looks good all right at baja hq where dan uh, uh overpowered one of the chairs good. and it it uh fell broke on him so if you'll notice we have these new chairs right back here Where's the sticker? Did you pull them all off? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where uh, the go? Sticker, it says uh, rated special. for 350 yeah, pounds. So uh, I didn't want to say that. I was just going to say they're Dan McMillan approved. Well, Dan, you don't weigh that much. I'm just saying they're rated for that. How's that? Do you feel? I'm, you know, I'm a little bit sorry about last time, but it sure was funny. <laughs> it was funny. I got more shit from that than anything <laughs> in my life. <laughs> it's because it was live on the internet. You're famous. Yeah, more than the fourth yeah. place thing? Yeah. I think that has taken place also, as a fourth thanks, place. thanks for asking. Trophy. I would prefer to start sixth at the Baja 500. I'm glad you guys asked me. So um, you're perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm perfect. No, well, I, think, I, think, I think that six. is a great and, – and what you guys are not thinking about yet is that yeah. the fact that now the bikes are going to start at 3.30 in the morning and the mm. trucks are going to start at 8.00. There's going to be a lot more spectators getting to their spots at 8, 8 in the morning than there is at the normal 11 o'clock or whatever when we leave. Not to mention they're going to be drinking at 8 in the morning well, also. Not to mention that they're going to be driving there when the bikes are racing. I mean, the bikes are going to see a lot of uh, spectators. Well, I think, I think overall it's, it's definitely um, always a concern. You know, the spectators don't always know when the vehicles are coming. Right. Uh, for the uh, lead trucks, I know the Premier Truck Collective – has a helicopter that's going to be flying with the lead trucks, but also I think out of the first five or six trucks, they all have helicopters as well. So the helicopter hopefully will let the fans know the trucks are coming. Um, being first on the road at San Felipe, we saw oncoming motorcycle, oncoming cars, and stuff like that. So you definitely have to be really careful, and that's what we were talking about. Where would you want to start? I said second to fifth, and he says 
Third to six. Third to six. What do you think, Dan? Says, Dan says top, top ten. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I'm with you, Dan. You know, when we qualify, yeah. I've said this before on the show, is that we don't ever really go out there on full go for it and try to get first. We're just trying to get in the top well, ten. And it depends. Yeah. It depends on the race, too. Yeah. Because look at what Luke did at San Felipe, starting 24th or 5th or yeah, he almost way won. back there. Yeah. And then to me, I, San Felipe is a different line. animal, though. It's different because it's, it's open desert, lots more of washes. We got the split halfway through uh, or at our pit. Um, after we left the pit and Dan went through, we got to split, or Luke went through. Luke's leading. I was like, oh, that, or, go, go, go. Now, did Score have a chopper over you as the lead truck at San Felipe, or was no. the, the Trophy Truck Elite or the, whatever your little the group The Premier called? Truck Collective did not have a helicopter. No, we didn't have they didn't. Okay. Did not. No, the, the group has, uh, it has splinters become, off a little bit. Yeah, splinters goes up and down a little bit, and so I think that there's a big resurgence for it for the safety because – not only is the Premier Truck Collective group uh, safer, but so are the fans, so are the other race teams, because the, the truck crew that puts the money in, it, it doesn't just service them. If there's an accident or there's an issue or anything on the track, that that helicopter that has a medic and it can go to, they will peel off and go to that. With the starting, with it starting earlier, it's more light hours that the helicopter can fly for safety now also. Because yes. once it gets That's dark, right. the helicopter has to go back. So now with yeah. them starting the race earlier, there's going to be a lot more helicopters in there longer. So I think for safety, that's yeah. a good thing that's for sure. Really, it's a really good point. It's going to be tough on the bike guys because they say that's why they never started in the dark for the bikes because that's generally when the bike guys crash is at the beginning of the race and get hurt and then they're – the choppers can't fly, so yeah. it's, a, it's kind of, it's I mean, kind of it's, a given. But it gets light at like short. six o'clock, doesn't it? Almost, you know, six, they're going to be out there for two and a half hours before it gets light out. But they should be like, fresh too. You would think right in the beginning, maybe you're a little better than if you've been riding all night and then you're like, you know. But like what we talked about, they're starting at three thirty in the morning. Why don't they start the bikes at midnight? If you're starting at three thirty, why not start at midnight and give them a nine hour head start? They start at the midnight. Truck? I mean, it could be the way the courses, the lead bikes coming in when the yeah they'd be worried about the last forty miles. Yeah, they're worried about the the final forty it's miles. Only, both it's only the last twenty it miles. Like, 20 if miles. we start at eight, if we start at eight and the last car or, goes I, off don't at quote 10, me on twenty. And then the lead bike the map here where it comes back at midnight together. and they're done. You're at 10, right. Then there's no good way, is there? I think how they're doing it now is actually it's it's actually a big improvement. And I think they appreciate. I like starting earlier for the trucks. More more daylight. Gnarly course this year, um, so maybe not finishing right. You know, at, at dark last night, last year, I came in with my lights on, with my front bumper lights on, because it was dark when we came to the finish line. Um, what about the part about we're we're reading that they're going to stop the bikes at a certain time, but it doesn't really say that. It just says when the checkpoints close. So technically speaking, I got I I had a message just now. I was talking to Jose G. Yes, and the checkpoint closing times are different for the motorcycles than for the cars so okay. so what they're going to do is when the checkpoint does close for a motorcycle or for the AT, motorcycles time they're gonna they're gonna stop them and their race will stop there they're not gonna let them continue on so they're gonna the have to go out to the road and and be careful don't quote us verbatim on anything <clears throat> this is all stuff that we've been working on getting the information for you always have to do your own research read the course bulletin the race bulletin and talk to the officials Go but to the that driver is the way meeting. We understand it, right? That's right. What, that's what we understand. I mean, that's the way we think it should be. The bikes get a certain amount of time to make it to, let's say, race mile 350. They have a certain amount of time. And if they don't make it by then, they're going to be stopped from racing because the trophy trucks are coming and we don't want the trophy trucks passing all the my guess handlebar is, guys. Uh, part of the issue is going to be, though, my guess is that they're not going to, the checkpoints aren't going to close before the first truck gets to that checkpoint. And that's where a lot of the issues are happening with the bikes and stuff where it's sketchy is with the lead, not even the lead truck packs, just the trophy truck pack and the class one pack, the faster vehicles that the bikes can't really stay in front of. That's where the issues are happening. Right. So we'll see what the checkpoint closing times are for the motorcycles and how big of a difference it's really going to make um, not getting mixed in so much with all the trophy it's truck. It's like the handlebar guys sometimes think the trophy truck guys are against them, but we're not. We're just... Out for more safety. I'm definitely not against the handlebar guys. I, you are I a handlebar guy. Yeah, he's a handlebar. I love riding dirt bikes, and I have raced some score races. Uh, not to any great uh, victories or anything, <laughs> but I have raced it. Um, so I have a lot of respect for the bike guys, and I think I feel like whenever we're the first truck on the road, we try to give tons of room to the bike guys. And um, having a helicopter is a huge asset because the helicopter can fly in front, 
And that way, the handlebar guy knows that the trucks are coming. coming. So that goes back to the conversation. But Pete says that's cheating. No, I, I don't think cheating. No, I never <laughs> said it was cheating. So it is technically an advantage to let the bike guy know because he's going to get out of the way. But it's more safety than any advantage. And, and, and my argument was the first, the, the, the first truck that catches that bike is a surprise. For, for sure. whatever reason, the bike guy doesn't know. He's got his earplugs but, in. His bike's loud. His pit guys aren't telling him or whatever. Never here's figure the out problem. Why they wear earplugs. But here's but, the but, problem, though. It's not the first. To my knowledge, the first truck or buggy has never gotten contact with a bike. It's always the guys behind. So the bike guy has been passed, right. and then he yeah, that's, still that's gets in contact with yeah. truck number seven well, the on thing, the road. The thing that I—that's the part that yeah. eats the thing me. I would like to see more of. And um, I know that SCORE has done special uh, motorcycle rider meetings. I'd like to see more inform- – I'd like to see the motorcycle teams spend more time getting that information out because what it feels like to me when you're racing, you can tell sometimes guys that have been getting the information and understand the trucks yeah. are coming. And then you can tell there's other guys that maybe didn't pre-run, maybe right. didn't get the, the – read the race briefing. Right. Uh, maybe don't understand that all the trucks are coming. Maybe didn't and go to the driver meeting. Maybe. And and they're just like they're they're confused and they don't realize that all these trucks are coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, that's one. thing. But after they're passed one time, how do you should, not know? You should know the there's rest more of coming. The yeah. Army I totally, is coming. I totally agree. But yeah. a lot of those, some of those guys have never even watched a trophy truck, so they don't understand. I mean, yeah. we want it's everybody. A hard topic. We want everybody to come to our sport and enjoy our sport and love our sport. And we just get so many people that watch Dust of Glory or whatever other movie and say, I'm going to go race the Bahama 1000. And they've never raced desert before. Yeah. And they get out there and they, they get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Do we have any questions so far? No, of, uh, uh, no I think we just people want to see the map. We don't have any hate mail. Uh, there <laughs> is. A, and Mikey Childress is there. He's uh, saying that. Oh, the uh, shortcut the for shortcut sportsman for bikes? Sportsman bikes. Yeah. Does There's a know mandatory that? shortcut. That's for what sportsmen, he's talking about. All sportsman classes and class 11. Should be Mike's Road. Is that where it is, Mike's Road? It should be. It's going to cut off the whole bottom loop. It should. So then, the class, your guys are going to be passing class 11 cars. The lead trucks. Good. Wait, what? Wait, what how is that? About that? <laughs> no, if it, no, if it did cut off at the... the San Felipe loop? If it cut yes. off at the Mike's Road, is that where it cuts off? No, I'm, I'm I don't guessing. So. I don't it know. It cut off 150 miles. I don't think they said where if it cuts off. If I was driving off, a class yeah. 11, I'd be ahead of you guys. It might go down to Via del Sol Road, and then instead of going through... Corvitas Wash, it'll just go up to Via del Sol Road. It says uh, Jose G is going to have more information soon. They, don't, the they didn't put it out yet. So to me, it looks like out. the cutoff yeah. would obviously be the whole San Felipe Loop. You would right? think so you'd go, yeah. So then, maybe, That's then, the safest then the for point sportsman is, riders. Maybe the upper part of the loop, you know, maybe just at the break. Over well, here, let's, should we bring this up for everybody yeah, to see? Yeah, let's bring the map up for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to look at us. Well, they've seen it. They don't look at me, Pete. So here's the map for the 50th anniversary Score Baja 500. In case you guys didn't realize that, it's a it's a big anniversary for this race, and a lot of heroes have competed in this over the years, as well as um, you know, there's been some great people in the promoting end of it. You know, I think it goes all the way back to the days of uh, Mickey Thompson uh, was involved. I, I don't have all the. You're the guy with all the stats. How did the Baja 500 get started? You I'm know not, that off the top of your head? I'm more of a statistician on the race results and the years <laughs> that guys won certain races. I'm not. Who I'm won not, the first Baja 500? I have no idea. There you I can go. Even tell Who you won the last one? one? I have a question for you, Andy. <laughs> Andy He's <laughs> driven a uh, Robbie truck, a geyser truck, a Wyrick truck, or what do you call it? Tisco? Tisco truck. Tisco truck, and now a Mason. A Stout, a Jimco. You've driven a Stout and a Jimco oh. in races? That's pretty There's nice. a throwback. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the four that you've raced. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, is, is the Mason the best? Mm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tough, huh? Embrace the faith. You were successful, very successful, very unsuccessful in the Robbie. Yeah. Very <laughs> successful in the Geyser. Right. Winning, I don't know, 50 races, it no. seemed like. <laughs> 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 Very successful in the one year in the Tisco. Two years. Two years in the Tisco? Yep. And then obviously you jump into a Mason and you're immediately successful again. Right. Yeah, I think it's just. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting I some. Uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, Which is the best? Someone else has uh, checked the newest one? 40. 
Is, yeah, the, I mean, is the, the wire it, close? It, it, the Mason is the best package I've driven, for sure. Just the Tisco is close? Package. Package. Tisco's still a good truck. You if you could get in the Tisco tomorrow for the 500, so let's say you're, is, somebody stole your Mason. Yeah. And you had to go back and drive that one. Same, you could yeah, win it? No problem. That off. Really? Yeah. How about the old Geyser? You still have it? I still have it. It Check needs an uh, engine upgrade. Oh, More it, power. Yeah, I still got just a small block, standard uh, 455 Courier engine from 2000. Just standard small block, like 455 that? Courier. My, my Geyser truck. That's not enough. Um, That's not. Well, just, you know, what guys are running nowadays and, you know, how fast they're getting up to speed and the underdrives. Like, my, my Geyser truck was very basic. Uh, very basic. And Could you still win it? Yeah, it's sex, it's oh, sex Rob McCacken just went San Felipe. Yeah. Yeah, but Rob McCacken stuff yeah. has all the updates. Yeah, with, has the, the, with, the, with the new stuff. With the new yeah, yeah. drive. Basically, yeah. the suspension, it would all be just more it's here, it's I think what, what yeah, Andy's saying is that if he upgraded the truck, it would be competitive. Right now, it's doesn't have all with the more, parts on more it. juice. Yeah. Right, yeah. More so juice. Rob and I have been racing our trucks since 2012 and continually upgrading. Um, so that's a little bit different than the truck that's just sitting. Correct. Car. Yeah. Correct. Have you driven so, one of the four wheel drives yet? Uh, no, I've driven the Mason four wheel drive uh, the very first time it was out, and they made a lot of changes since then. I haven't driven it. Did you like it? I liked it. Yeah. I just I heard Rob it. drove a Geyser four wheel drive the other day. Did oh, you nice. say? Did you say uh, racer? You ra just driven a racer too, right? Because both of your cousins have racers. I have. I haven't raced it, but I've, I've driven. He's driven I think he hasn't driven. What about you? You driven, driven the racer, area. the Geyser. What else have you driven? Raced the Geyser, a Tisco, Tisco truck with Tisco. Gary, and then I drove the four wheel drive Mason truck. And all all of them thoughts different. All different. Mid engine four wheel drive. Every time? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a handful. It's just if, different. It's if just, you can get fourth every time, you can win the championship. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> which is the goal? Do you think this is a four wheel drive course? <laughs> no. Or is this a two wheel no. drive? Which course? is the goal? This isn't Silver State. This isn't a four wheel drive course. Okay. What do you think, Andy? Um, I think it's similar to last year. Matney got second to me by two or three minutes last year, and he was right there. Um, what do you think, I think Kevin? he finished with a little bit of a driveline thing going in the front. He but, does really yeah. good, and he's getting better all the time. I think. I think. I think. I think it's. I don't think it's a bad course for it. I don't think it's a great. It's not a thousand peninsula run to La Paz. Right. Yeah. You know? I don't think it's uh, a great course for it, but I do think the fact that we're running. I think the, the a lot of the whoops opposite of where normally the right. alley direction is might help that a little right. bit. Let's get and to actually, a couple of, couple of questions. And then another ahead. thing about the map. Yeah. I know we all, I mean, the, when the, we first the four drive, it, the four-wheel drive has to make it to Mike's Road. And so if you can make it there, it's going to do okay. I don't, I don't yeah. think the San Felipe And the corner loop, of corners and Mike's, it'll the San Felipe Loop It's got to get through go, that stuff. Yeah. The San Felipe, the, the San Felipe Loop was. we're doing is not that rough. I don't, I don't think it's that rough. It's, it's the Washi Ram. Oh, no, it is, it is yeah. going the same direction. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's going the same direction we did it. Why did I say that the second time I said that? The upper loop, you know, from, you get from all Borrego care. all the way all, back yeah, to yeah, Borrego, there's not a whole lot of bumps in there. There's a couple little sections with some whoops. But when you say the word Borrego... As, as long as it doesn't go down Morelia Road, that's fine. No, from Borrego North. All right, guys, let's take a couple comments real quick. Jason Hutter asked, do you know if there are any new safety procedures for the Highway 3 San Matias area? We do not know that. That's something I'm sure Scorer will... I mean, we have heard that. The, uh, it was 20 zone. miles per hour. 20, oh, oh, 20 oh, miles per hour speed zone. To me, that is yes, yes, definitely yes. Sorry. adding to the safety I factor. was thinking about where... So parallel right here. Parallel oh, highway. Wow. But yes. He was talking uh, about I think that needs to be a speed zone all the way from where it parallels the highway. 60 miles an hour all so the way. So it's yellow on the dirt. Is speed zone. So Dan is, saying from, this. Dan is saying from race mile 252 to 260, you would like a 60 mile an hour speed zone on the, on the wash next to the dirt. Absolutely. And the yeah. bumps next In the, the dirt. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's Too many way. locals. It's easy to get watch the course. I mean, it's going to be packed with people. And Obviously, it's, it's, we just had a bad accident. There. A bad so accident. That's another section. thing. So and the change, that's... the change for sure, is that 20 miles an hour on the highway where there's two-way traffic. Don't forget, Score has also imposed a low beam uh, light rule, which mm -hmm. started last year. Mm -hmm. So you gotta have your low beams, and, and you pit. cannot pit across the highway. Right. You have to yeah. pit right side only, which is good. So those are three really good changes. The 20 miles an hour on the highway is pretty crazy because you're going to be pretty passed slow. by a lot of vehicles. Chase trucks, semis. Yeah, yeah, but when you're going 20 miles an hour, uh, you could hit somebody head on and it's not going to be you could stop. a bit as catastrophic as 60 miles an hour. No, yeah. I totally agree. I'm I'll not saying that. they should do it. I'm yeah. just saying right. it's like going to be really, I'll really take interesting slower drive to all day long. I'm Everyone, very, everyone's got to go 20 scoring forces. The speed limits very, very well. They're right. very strict on it. So, and if everyone's going 20, it doesn't matter. And but you do, you do. Everybody. When you get on the goat down the goat trail and you get on the highway, you go 37, 37. there. So it's going to be an hour 
from the goat trail to where you get off over here, doing no, you, 37 miles an no, hour, No, right? you get off where the highway yeah, crosses the wash. Okay, so it's 15 miles approximately. Yeah, yeah we did that. So it's like 30 minutes. It's more. So, I think that's more than 15 miles, isn't it? Where you no, yeah, goat from goat trails. Like goat trail is like 105, the tra- yeah, and then yeah. you go to 125. 125. That's 20, 20 miles. 20 miles at 37 miles an hour. Yeah, so 45 that's minutes. Half that's minutes. going to be at 20 miles an hour, right? And some at 20. Oh, yeah. All the way down. See, that, it might be We're not very good hour. at math. We're just. <laughs> so 40, 45 minutes, maybe? Yeah. So, so that's racing a, for 100 miles. Cool your truck off before the desert. 45 minutes of hanging out. But it should be safe, in theory, going that slow through there. And in the theory. other thing, when you're pitting, which that's going to be a very high pit area right there, you have to pit on the right side of the road. You're not mm-hmm. allowed to use the same pit for when you come <clears> back <throat> around. You have to move over to the other side of the road to pit again. So if anybody yeah. does that, Jose, you wanted to make sure everybody knows that you will be getting a penalty if you cross over the road to pit on the other side. I actually think that's going to be such a highly trafficked area for spectators, chasers, and pit crews. On Luke that, McMillan on called me out. Yes, we're not running them backwards. I'm sorry. I for some reason my head was turned around on the San Felipe loop. <laughs> on Take it easy on me. There's, there's not going to be opportunity to cross over. And pit on the other side because I think it's just gonna be solid pits on Nate so many Hunt, people. Yeah, Nate Hunt from Jackson Motorsports Group, who's part of the mapping crew for the Baja races, says, "Can we get a remote bu- um, a remote mute button for some of the microphones in the room?" I wonder who he's talking about. No, we can't, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my sweatshirt too. How do you like that? There's his hand, um, whose grandfather used to own HGRA and run HGRA. Of course, uh, Walt Lott, a legend in the sport. Lucas is here. Uh, we know he's a great friend of Jake's as well. His question is, what do you think about the finishing time? How long is it going to take? Yeah, Darren to, just asked that also. Good question, Darren. Ten hours on the money. Hmm. Ten hours is what Pete's yeah, saying. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. What do you think, Dan? That's a, that's a slow mic sleep, I think. Uh, ten. I know, the stuff behind Melling's not fast. That's, that's 1045. Not fast I don't 45. know. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. <laughs> I, uh, I we're just not said... asking about your time. We're asking about the winner, Dan. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, 1045. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. <Ruth> wow. <laughs> Mike Childress agrees. 20 miles an hour. Super safe. I think uh, Mikey's going to be there racing in the number 57 truck, if I'm not mistaken. Mike Palmer. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, Very good. we're taking a look at some of the others. Um, got some good information on there. Luke McMillan all over it. He likes to uh, – he's saying this is a smooth 500. Mm. So we don't always say that, yeah. but – I think – yeah, I, like I actually think the roughest stuff is going to be the stuff behind Mike's. So um, let's let's look over there. Let's let's uh, take the map that direction a little bit. So we're just going to skip the first – Is this new? What is this to wrench El Coyote here? When's the last time we There's ran There's a lot of new stuff. A lot way. of stuff we haven't done since 04, 05, I think, 03. I think some stuff, the way it looks like on the map when I zoomed in – it looks like when we did the 2014 500, I didn't race that year, but I pre-ran. We Jake. went the we went counterclockwise around the Mike's loop, but I think it's running some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I think um, we're running back the big, that the, white silt hill. The big yes. U-shape down there. Yes, um, around 320 not, to 330. Yeah, until I'm on there, I'm not really sure what that is or the last time we ran around that. We kind of laid over some old in. existing maps, and it's a lot of old stuff. There's a, there's some old Misto stuff out there for sure. We. It's really cool. We, I, love, uh, I, love, I love the big Mike's Loop stuff. This I, is all coming down the side of the mountain here. Dan, right here. Dan you sure have a lot of information about where the course is going for a map that just came out 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, it came out earlier. It came out earlier today. Oh, it did? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, I, I got Senator. This is why Pete doesn't race anymore. Senator McMillan. <laughs> Senator McMillan. Uh, Jacob Andrews says nine we have a, hours. We have a book window. about did we, we have have a book sexual about this relations with, with that woman. We have done it a couple times. You guys don't argue. Jacob, I don't think nine hours is <laughs> – I think later nine hours maybe, but um, the fact that there's so many slow highway sections is going to change that as well. Yeah, I mean, last year my time was – I think it was 10 hours and three minutes or something. Right. And that was, you and know, it was under tire. 500 miles. It was less miles, right? Right. And this it's is faster this is highway five speed. More miles. I did not take into consideration the really and slow uh, asphalt. Speeds. Yeah, we've been, yep. so we've been caught, we've been Dan working on that right for the last money. couple of years. And it was a faster, sections. it was a faster mic section. The mic section last year wasn't nearly this big. Oh yeah, we didn't um, go way out into less, the Malling Park. Less, less beach. We're going south of San Telmo, it looks like. We're now, is there silt over here? Bink was asking if there's any silt. There is, he probably wants to get some pictures. The hills outside of Melling Ranch, there are there is silt. If you guys remember, yeah, three, that's a new loop right there. I think ago, the three three twenty looks new. Although although I agree with you that there is some new stuff out there or different stuff, I think it's it's all the same. It, it gets so beat yeah. down so quickly. Yeah. If now just this is a note for everybody that's going to pre run. 
If you pre-run the uphills and the areas that could turn into silt without spinning your tires, you will not create a silt bed. Is that does that make sense to everybody? Can, can you repeat that? <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> can you repeat that, <laughs> sir? Here's another public service announcement. If you're gonna make a line, don't drive through it a dozen times so everybody else can see it. Or <laughs> before the race. My yeah. dad's terrible at that. He's really bad at that. I want to practice like, everyone's that gonna find it anyway, might as well show it to him. Like, yeah. I want to practice yeah, that shortcut. Oh, yes. Man, there's so there's a line out on the uh, the beach section that I've had in my head from back when I raced sixteen hundred cars. And just a little corner cut, not a big deal. But two years ago on the pre run for the Bob five hundred, someone tracked it and I'm like, why? It it was sitting there mm. on a ninety corner, a straight across, the rocks had all been cleared mysteriously, and for a <laughs> decade that spot was sitting there just waiting for a pass. Mm. And someone tracked it in and made it the line. Now it's the race course. Probably Luke. You know, right where the water, you know where you go down around the water hole now where you used to cut across? There's like a little dam, a dam in there, a dike with the water now. Just yep. just to the uh, south of Arendia, yeah. south of Punta Cabras. You know that little 90 cut exactly that's talking about. across that? that? I walked that thing when I was racing 1600 huh. cars and I'm like, I'm going to get someone here someday. Let's check it out. <laughs> Saved it. All those years. Put that in the memory bank. Never, never, never drove it. So this, this coast section, is this the same section that we've normally run down the other way? Is this it looks the same? like the same as like what we did at the so, like 2016. Here's, so, here's something that's really different. I can't ever recall running all the way up to Colonet Wash from the coast. Right. Which we're doing that. We're coming north. From like and 395 to, to 400. We're, we're, jots, we're, we're at Zoom and Fish. At right there. Zoom into that. Area, so we're gonna we're gonna. It looks like it gets on the highway. By the way, you're looking at the map there, but it's gonna run up the Colonet Wash all the way from the coast. So pre mile 400, where you see the the ocean down there, yeah, all the way up to the highway. That's all Colonet Wash. Yeah, normally we go left out that on top of that bluff. Yep. out there, mm -hmm. and then head up the beach. And you can see where we go up. What we're doing is we're gonna go under the the wash. Then we're gonna go <clears throat> under the bridge that we raced under a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming last, south. Last was year. That last year. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go back through that remote section that's up there in all that coastal agave. Yeah. Before uh, Johnson's Ranch, I like that right? Up there. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That was a fun section. It used to be really fun before we raced on it because we could ride our dirt bikes up there. That was right after where that <laughs> checkpoint was moved last year. Right, right. There's actually a gotcha right after the left turn off the coast. Like people were kind of jumping mm -hmm. off that thing. It's mm -hmm. kind of sketchy right yeah. there. But I don't think that's. Uh, that's going to be a cool new section. There's going to be a lot of fans in that area, so definitely be very definitely. careful. Yeah, that's going to be in the afternoon, too, you know, 3 o'clock maybe. Well, especially like especially, that especially with it being June, it's going to be hot in the desert area, so I don't think it's going to be as popular as San Felipe in some of those spots. Just Which is why Mike's Road is going to be a zoo. Doug, Doug Haydack so saying that the last time Race Mile 320 was used was in the 2007 Baja 1000 down Rio Santa Domingo. So wow. yes, down by the right. San Domingo River. So if you guys have never stopped at a point of interest, obviously we do our trail emissions trip, but there is also some mission ruins in there too when you get down along the river uh, closer to the highway. And there's an old flying resort on the other side that's rumored to have been uh, uh, frequented by big movie stars back in the 40s and 50s. It's a pretty cool little area down there. Just thought I'd throw that in there. So <laughs> after Colonnade, it uh, comes back out towards the coast again. Now, uh, depending on the weather... And what time you get here, the uh, F word, which we're not going to say, could be a bit of a factor sometimes at this race. You never know. Yeah. We don't we don't say the F word because we don't want it to talk the about The only time the we talk about uh, the Baja Fog is when we're in oh, uh, San it. Carlos. He said it. Has, who's been to San, Punta San Carlos to Solo Sports? If you guys have never been, you got to go get the ball, get fogged at, the, at uh, Punta San Carlos. It's a great place. <laughs> but don't go when I want to go because if it's sold out, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> That looks like a lot of the same traditional stuff back up the beach. And yeah, then there's another uh, wash. Is this a uh, Santa Tomas right here? This little highway section, or what's this? Because it's a speed zone. That's no, that's Arendia. just that's just a pre-run ca precaution mm -hmm. on that really good road leaving Arendia. Okay, and is that a speed zone a for the of, race, Andy, or no. is that just for the? It's pre just it's just a caution on pre-running. Let's uh, let's let's highlight that a little bit. When you're pre-running, you are doing course reconnaissance. You're not pre-racing to see how fast your pre-runner will go. Absolutely. Now, I'm sure some people are going to go fast in certain sections, but word of caution and use your brain cells. Keep it nice I mean, and slow. It's different when you're out in the desert like down by San Felipe and you're out in the wide sure. open desert. Right. Then when you're over on the coast the driving towns. on the main roads. Even on the line sleeves. Just about every single time I go pre-running, two or three or four or five times, there's a head-on traffic coming the other way. I'm always 
When I was younger, I used to drive a lot crazier on the pre-runs because I didn't really have that big of a brain yet. And it was really fun before I started racing. Pre-running was, you know, my time to go fast. And uh, and not really a lot of close calls because my uncle, uh, Dan's dad, or my dad would be in the front making sure no one's coming. We're all on radio. Two of the greatest score race car drivers of all time, by the way. Not you two turkeys, yeah, but your, your Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> and I want to remind everybody. So definitely safe. Be safe on the pre-runs. Always be Close the gates. Mm -hmm. Close your gates. Always be anticipating a local coming backwards around the blind corner. Oh, and don't, and and don't, map, the and don't the dust them out. Expect it. Expect it. Yeah. The map is out today, but the pre-run does not open until Saturday, May 19th. Which is a, a much shorter window than you might have expected, but, you know. Right. But they, Roger and Score has only made deals with all the landowners that we will be out there pre-running only from Saturday, May 18th and be, May Which is 19th why I think we should have more VCPs on the coast to keep people I, from cutting farms and stuff. I can see some yeah, people absolutely. celebrating a lot more VCPs. on there that uh, we're talking about the Baja Fog, Cody Stewart, uh, Dan Eckert from Baja Designs, and I think being all talking about the fog on there. So it's a... Uh, it's an interesting thing you guys I, have. I had my things. first Baja Fog at the 2013 Baja Bonanza in Ensenada. It was a good time. Was, it was, was beautiful to host you there. there. Yeah. Beautiful to host you there, buddy. That was fun. A triple threat. <laughs> Remember the triple threat? Oh. So uh, let's oh, talk more God. about the race course. I think uh, the one question oh, that came man. up, uh, we haven't really covered a lot of that bottom section. San Felipe Loop is what we'll call it. But uh, the heat, definitely going to be a factor. We Drink your water. We about that hydration. Something that everybody should be focusing on carrying a pack of extra water. Liquids, I think liquids. Score actually put out in the bulletin today that there's a mandatory rule about for the carrying water. Quad riders that they have to have so much water on board. Yeah, they are required to use a hydration pack equivalent to a minimum one liter or two liters in size. If is required, if the temperature is expected to be over eighty. So I'm sure it's going to be over 80. Yes. So the minimum think, is two I think it's liter. Be over 80 and two liter hour. required. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, yeah. realistically, I mean, the Baja 500 has been going on for 50 years. I remember vividly as a kid uh, riding, navigating. So sometime between uh, 82 and 84 or five um, in our 51600 car, we actually came up with a system, not for drinking, but we had a water bottle system on the floor of the passenger side with a, wa a windshield washer motor. I was in charge of refilling that bottle and spraying water on the cylinder heads of the 1600 car if i'm not i mean it could have been spraying somewhere else yeah to try to keep it cool <laughs> going across the lake beds and we're talking 120 plus degrees yeah, out there so for sure um you know i'm very cautious even about just sending pit crews out there um everybody really has to think about the heat they have to hydrate properly they have to have proper setup have to have shade um i think that what happens is people maybe just don't do enough planning for their pits or for anything, and they just hydrating is a huge part of it. I think, I think, I think everyone plans for everything to go according to plan. That's what I was trying to say. You know, yeah, you never you know, predict the worst. You, you never plan for the worst. 16, for the worst. it was so hot out there. I mean, all it was so crews, hot. Pit crews, I remember we were parked next to the Herbs. My shoes melted. And who's more prepared than the Herbs guys? And they were out of water. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it was it was incredible. Down so, there. what I was trying to say, not so much the racers, but the racers should adhere to it, too. But, I mean, the crews need to really oh, yeah. overthink it, really plan it, understand what you're doing, where you're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just that's just brutal. And man. even, like, in 16, when it was super hot, I pre-ran a week before, and it was it was beautiful. It was 85, 90. No, for and sure. Then, you... And then it went up 35 degrees yeah. on race day. It was yeah. It was like 100 and what, 20, like one of the 125 in Borrego? Days yeah. on record or something. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, we did get an update that Aaron Dura or India, it is a speed zone during the race, is what we got. On update. the dirt road right there on the Through coast. town. It is a speed zone during the Road's race. I, so, yes, that's what we just that's got an update. That's great. So it is, it is a speed I mean, zone. I'm, I'm fine with that. it. Yeah. I mean, we've been. Uh, there's so there's so many places where we can go full speed, full race. I think there's a couple sections where we need to be safer. Be well, safer I think also not tires, only be so. safer, but. You know, don't beat up Be more the respectful. local roads, too, yeah. you know. Take, take respect. And when we're talking about pre-running, one thing, definitely, when you're around the farm fields. Um, don't cut them. Don't, well, not just don't cut them, but don't dust them out. You know, that stuff is, a lot of that is org organic-grown produce. They're trying to keep the dirt off of it. So the more you go slow during your pre-run, or That's even when you're point. just down having fun in Baja, just respect all that stuff. Totally. Really, yeah, don't ruin it for everybody guests, else. Yeah. You know? We're guests down there, and, and they're inviting us to come. Billy Moore said in 2016, it was 125 degrees on the lake bed. Man, I can't even imagine. It was, I was Oof. down there on the side of the highway up by San Felipe where that one pit was, and mm -hmm. it was it was, it was, it was should, we do, should we do the start? Do you want to go down the course? 
we're gonna do, we're just uh, gonna, I think like, we covered a lot of it. I mean, the first 100 miles is same old, same old down K77 goat trail I'm just down. People yeah. Are interested in I think the Mike's loop is worth What does everybody want to see? Let us know what you guys want to see because then we're going to get to the entry list in a little bit too. I think, I think, I think, I think the Mike's loop is the most interesting part of this course because that is just a lot of old stuff. Some looks like a couple of new little loops in there, but that's cool. That's I'm glad Scores is doing that. Definitely a lot of middle tight of, twisty around. Talk the about 340, the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you break up here, I think you're going to be there. Till the I mean, El Coyote was the middle of nowhere, yeah, but now you're going south to three. Th- I mean, th- look at three thirty. There's actually what, a good. What the hell's road. out there? There's yeah. a good access <laughs> road that goes into there. San Looks like there's road. one right here. So yeah, that's San the Tomo three right there, the three thirty, I think, gets on that old road and comes back to you. Um, where we used to junction off. Remember, a lot of the races we've done, and we come down from. El Coyote down to the side of the mountain and crossed onto that small pavement, the San Pedro Martir Road, yeah. and then crossed into that back road. I think yeah. that section by 330 is that road just going the other direction. Gotcha. But I'm not totally positive. But uh, it looks like a pretty interesting course. Jose, well, let's talk about Jose G's efforts he's put in. I mean, uh, between he and the whole score crew, Roger's uh, interest in giving more miles. I, I really think that them and the Jackson Motorsports crew with BF Goodrich that lay out the course, I think they've been doing a great job on the course. They've done a great job. And, you know, we've always complained about we're running the same old stuff all over, over and over. And then San Felipe, you know, 330 miles. There there you go. You guys wanted that. Now look at this. A lot, of, we did a lot of old stuff. Here you go. This is what you want. I more. think it's great. Yeah, more San Felipe miles next year. They say. Yeah. What I Thanks. didn't want was Thank the, you. Was the, Morelli Road parallel. I, I that was terrible. The crossover road? That, that was awful. I could have well, gone the, 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 the section that paralleled Morelli. We got the added seven years ago or so. Yeah. Can't, can't they just take a tractor through it once? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to put in like two grand to hire. We all hire someone and go down there and blade. But, but, but there's a wash down there that you know we I usually don't is, that we don't take. How do they? How do they? How do they service the power lines if they don't grade that road ever? Yeah. Right. I, I keep thinking someday there's going to be a tractor is going to blade that, but maybe not. See SDG Let's talk about there. the starting lineups. Well, you know, it's funny. Look at there's The first one is Rob McCachron, and then Luke is second on the entry list here. What, what happened? Also, uh, no uh, Ryan Arciero. Yeah, what, what happened? Um, uh, Cody has sent our entry in now, so that should be in. <laughs> Cody handles all the entries. And there's only one entry for Cameron Steele? Uh, good question. Uh, there's only there might be only one entry right now. We're still in discussion. <laughs> and how did that Bobby Pacoy? You gonna race the fourteen? How did that fourteen end up at San Felipe when you were gonna enter it? Uh, you there know what? No we, hurt, we hurt the transmission and then we got a hole in the fuel cell. <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh my god! It's a mysterious ticking sound. Just saying. <laughs> took it out of the race. It was the fuel cell that took it out of the race. We fixed the transmission. Oh, okay. But uh, you know, I think that when you start talking about um, the field, it's going to be pretty deep. If you take a look at the finishing from San Felipe, the start order for the top 10 uh, will be Rob McCachron, who we all know. Pretty Some cool. of us consider him the greatest of all time. Some consider Andy. Right Some on his heels is the, is the second greatest of all time, Cameron Steele. Well, I'm a, I would say I'm a legend in my own mind. Yes. I don't know about the greatest <laughs> of all time in anything. The second greatest. Um, I, I would say maybe I'm the greatest Pistol P partner of all time. Mm-hmm. Good. Is that, I agree with that. Wow. Yeah, that's a stretch. No, I think that's that's pretty accurate. Exactly. Pretty that's true. Okay. I've had pretty some true. better than you. Third, third off the line will be uh, Luke McMillan, who is the youngest of the McMillan boys that are all here in the top six. How old is Luke now? Twenty five. Luke is twenty five because I'm thirty. He's five years younger than me. Good man. Oh, man, Thank he's you. getting old. I know. I used to call him Little Cheater. That's my name for him. I like. Did that. he? Is he married yet? Did he get engaged? No, no, he did not get no. engaged. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. fourth he did profess line. his love for her on Facebook the other day. He did. He's been doing so that's pretty that. serious. He's very vocal about that. Very <laughs> vocal. He's pretty a, serious. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a vocal romantic. Yeah. <laughs> he likes the public display of affection. I, I have vocalized on my social media that I love my wife, but I don't, I'm not sure I if she likes me. Um, <laughs> fourth off the line, Annie McMillan. Annie, how old are you now, Bebo? 31 tomorrow. Well, that's Happy a good number. Oh, wow. Thank so you're going to be 31, <laughs> racing number 31. That's me. I thought you were a lot older than your little brother, Dan. No, six months. Cousin. Brother. <laughs> Five months. Six months? Seven months? It's uh, May, December. Six months. Six, seven. It's a Roman. Five it's plus. May, December. Five. Twelve we're, months. We're five. really yeah, good yeah, math. Se- seven. You seven. guys are awesome. Math. Hope Fifth you guys are better with your fuel mileage, Matt. I'm sure it's San Filippo. It'll be Ryan Arciero. Maybe he'll have his. He uh, said he's entered. His entry is, is in. He said. Right. He right. Is mm-hmm. he yeah. going to make sure his, uh, he his uh, right, navigator is yeah. not in yet? Mm-hmm. He might have to bump, bump you back. His navigator yeah. going to cut his armband off right before the start of the race? Ooh. Yeah. Can't oh, yeah, race. Don't do that. Stainless steel coating says great course this year. 
Uh, taking a look, Jerry Laramore, Speed Zones are great for, for making tinkle. Good, well <laughs> done. Thank you for that, uh, Jerry. Um, Jerry, how does host clamps? The drama, the entry list shenanigans. That's what we're going through now. Going and we through have the, the dark horse starting sixth. Dan McMillan. Dan McMillan. Dan, what's your what's your best score race finish? I won uh, San Felipe Challenge of Champions in 2011 in Class One, and I got third overall in a Class One in 2010 San Felipe. Oh, you um, talked Armin, you Jesse, then me. On our last show, you, cool. you talked about having a teammate for the 500. Are you? Are you solo? Uh, I have someone I'm thinking about. Someone you're thinking about? You no, we're talking, about, we're talking about racing. Yeah, yeah, racing. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, her too. Seventh up the line, Adam Household. All right, so on that one, I just talked to Adam yesterday. He wanted me to tell you guys, you guys heard this here, anyone who, anyone, but depending on who you are, if you DNF'd at San Felipe, call up Adam because he's willing to make a deal. You nice, would, you would, you nice would have, Adam. He's not going to race his truck, which means you would have to race your own truck, and you would have to enter as Adam Householder under the number 24, mm-hmm. but... Anybody like, you know, maybe uh, Cole Potts or Justin Matney or Toby one of these, Price. Toby Price. There's some other fans. Toby, 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 Price, Toby Price bought Post's spot. So, so they it, rose number So three, if he wanted to, he could call up Adam and shit. enter as Adam under 24, bought and Toby Post's Price spot. could start seventh. Yeah. Look at the very they, bottom. They, Toby they, or Tisco bought Post's spot number drove, because yeah. they weren't happy with it. Personally, my top candidates for taking householders' spot would be – uh, Justin, Justin Matney. Matney, Josh Daniel. Uh, Josh, Josh is not Daniel. able to make it to the race. Okay. He has something. I think it's Herbs. Yes, Herbs. that you can switch trucks and people. I don't know. Well, I think they're made made a rule off for. Well, I think it's Matney or Herbs. San Felipe was a cluster. Matney or Herbs will take it. The yeah. problem was no they way, didn't Pops make you put it. your frame tag on the entry form like, like they always do. I think Pots right. is a big player Take for that years. spot. Yeah. Yeah, Pots. I agree. Yeah. Hey, so Adam Household, let me tell you this. Don't sell yourself short. Make sure that you're Adam's on here watching driving uh, either Hi, the Adam. start or the, or the second part. You know, make sure in yeah, the you deal, get half the race. You get half the race. You know, make sure you make oh, a smart a deal. Make there. sure you get the start. And then Adam gets to race still, not with his truck, but he gets to offer something gives up it for the, it. Gives him the entry for free in turn seven. drive half. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Another wild card up there is Alan Ampudia. In he's eighth. A, he's Very in eighth fast. start position. Definitely and wild. He passed me at San Felipe. That was fun. Would be Justin Smith, a.k.a. Bryce Menzies. What do we hear about Bryce coming back? Is he all good? I don't think he's racing the 500. I think his back's... So you can only have a replacement driver one race, right? But look at the name. The, the yeah, name. The name. No the name they have is Justin Smith. They don't have it as Bryce Menzies. So Justin can drive his car all year and just be Justin. It's Smith. It's just Justin I Smith. Guess, yeah. okay. According to the results, right? Because it says Justin Smith. It doesn't say Bryce. But Menzies. for the well, his agents, right there. <laughs> is, how's, how's Bryce's He's back coming along? He has and, uh, MRI on. MRI for Bryce Menzies next scheduled race, uh, next week or so. That'll be a checkup, but at any rate, it won't keep Bean. Bean was great at San Felipe, but unfortunately, there will be someone else in the truck Ooh. either doing all of it, part of it, none of it, but someone else, big name. Just in case uh, you can hear that, Paul uh, uh, for the job not going to be Bean. Lucas Oil race. S- Steve Menzies oh, racing it. Carl Bill on the Lucas Mexico race. I, he has family commitments. I talked to him. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Carl's a great driver. Um, so. We'll see what happens with the Menzies number seven. Um, tenth off the line, Chris Miller with a solid finish in San Felipe. I talked to him at the finish line. He was stoked. Very stoked. Yeah, he's good. He's, he had a good finish at, at the thousand, too. Yeah, he did for sure. Yeah, yeah he was like sixth, fifth. Fifth or sixth, yeah. Fifth. fifth. Yeah, so he's coming along. And then behind him, Tim Herps, uh, Steve Olagas, uh, Kerry Smiley, uh, Juan Carlos Lopez, um, who I think that if. Maybe if his son wanted to, he could start there. I'm not sure if they're racing both trucks all year long or not. I would think if Dolly's probably going for the points with his number. Yeah, so the gotcha. championship. Gotcha. That's number one. I guess he did last year. Some of the guys going a little further back. Mr. Robbie Gordon in the 19th position. The Baja 500 is usually a good race for him. Good race for his equipment, too. That that mid-engine, yeah. uh, very nimble, lower He's had ground. some tough luck lately, though. Yeah, Robbie, he's Robbie said he's, uh, he's Robbie does really good truck. when he starts up in the front. He's a little deep. I think he's a little yeah. deep. Yeah. If you, if you noticed, I saw the other day, he uh, he said as soon as they're done with the Wildcat production deal, he's building a four-wheel drive trophy truck. Mm. That was what Robbie said himself. Taking the bait. So Love it. We'll yeah. see when he uh, when he. Billy Wilson playing. is fast, starting in the 20th position. Someone to definitely pay attention to. Ricky Johnson, the 16th spot. A lot of, lot of hitters in there. Josh Daniel. 
Um, just a lot of good drivers that are back further in the pack. It's going to be interesting for timing purposes. Um, usually, keep track of yeah. Them. Usually, if you qualify, you get all the all the guys. Most of the guys you want to time up towards the first fifteen, but now you have guys back twenty five and further. Yeah, you got Billy Billy Wilson, Abdali, and BJ Baldwin right there. I think Abdali Abdali is really the one to watch. From back there, I agree. He's, what do you guys yeah. think on uh, social media? Remember, share this if you haven't shared it already, so uh, people can see what's going on. Adam said he's not running for points, so he's just open to go for the win if somebody wants a spot. He doesn't care about the points this year. Uh, Cody Stewart says beans in. Ooh, wow. Anyway, he's in. Well, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, what he's in, <laughs> but uh, maybe he's in the fourteen. Can we talk about UTV, says uh, Joey D. Yeah, the Players' Championships this weekend. Uh, I think Ricky and Tiger and Phil are going to have a great run out there. <laughs> and the other uh, thing to pay attention to isn't the uh, the uh, Mint 400 is going to be on ABC's World of X Games as well. I think that's next week, if I'm not mistaken. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. 19th? 19th. That's, that's, next, that's uh, yeah, next Saturday. This Saturday, right? Yeah. Or Sunday? The day the pre-run opens. Saturday. So the day yes. the pre-run opens, remember you guys mark your calendars. The Martelli brothers working hard there, yep. uh, doing some cool stuff. I don't, you know, uh, taking a look at some of uh, t- taxes there. Who is twelve oh six in the who house? Who is not on this list that's racing? That could be in the back. That could be a dark horse. Is that's anyone, a good question. Anyone, well, if you look at the entry Mikey list, Childress? how about Tavo? Yeah, is no, Tavo's not racing, racing all year. He's running the business. Not he's sure. not racing all, all year. He said all year. Yeah. Unless he changes his mind later, but he's not on the entry I remember list last either. year, Lofton raced the 500, which was a first. Yeah, he's not on the entry list yet, but he could be. Could be. I, I think I Lofton was just... Believing Lofton, Lofton just blew up his motor, Any though. good guys who were yes. trying to win at, uh, the 500 weren't Sam at the race. We're we're weren't, Sam weren't trying to... Qual- yeah. If yeah, you're trying to win the 500, you I agree with that. We have to pick a top five, everybody. Question. Is Ricky Johnson racing a four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive Mason, the 500? That's a good question. They just raced that at the Dos Maris race, yeah. uh, and they had a bunch of pre-run miles on it, and then it only made it a little bit in the race, and I think they had a converter problem or something like that. But right. they have been putting a lot of pre-run miles on it, and they pre-ran San Felipe with it. So I'm curious I because we talked earlier about if this is a two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive race. So now they've yeah. got options. I think it's yep. actually a good race for that kind of – that For a four-wheel drive? drive. Yeah. The 94 wheel drive is limited in wheel travel in the front. So, in some of the rougher spots, it's at a little bit of disadvantage. Um, this one has a different style uh, front setup and it's a mid engine. So, it's got more travel in the front. It could, be, it could be a good race for it. I mean, it's just, it's a crapshoot because, you know, without a lot of testing and not knowing if it's going to survive or not, you know, I think it's still, it's going to come down to, you know, all these guys racing the two wheel Someone drive. mentioned Serapis not on the entry, but Serapis is with Herps, correct? Christian's racing with the Herps. Yeah, yeah Brett he is racing. Brett races with I'm not sure what Troy. Brett's He's racing with Troy, but but now it's Ed. And is Christian racing with Timmy? No, no. I, I saw Steve yesterday. He said Christian is starting in the ninety one. Oh, he is. Well, there you go. Yeah, I see Christian Serapis yeah. on here. One of the faster. Uh, he says four wheel drive drivers. for your question, Dan. Who? Christian Serapis says four wheel drive truck for the Mason truck. All right, Andy, I have a question for you. Thank Before you, Christian. the San Felipe, you weren't happy that the qualifying for the Baja 500 was San Felipe, yeah. and you were just going to drive around and get a decent starting spot, which is w- the way it worked out. Yeah. Is that the way you really drove San Felipe, or were you trying to win? No, I was, I was, I mean, as soon as you put the helmet on and the green flag does. I pretty much thought like so. Like you but, said, the type A personalities kick in of the race car driver, and, and you know, you want to win the races. I, I, I cut two flat got two flat tires and one was they were both about two and a half minute changes, so that's five minutes. I lost by six. So that that cost me right there. But how about traffic at San Felipe? Was that a big issue? Um I got into some traffic. Yeah. No, with with the trucks. There was oh. some traffic, but trucks nothing line. nothing too crazy. I got householder on that line. I followed uh I followed Ampudia for a little bit before they pitted with a flat. Um, at like mile 70 at the, the highway crossing, followed Bean for a little bit in Matomi until he pulled over with a flat. Um, but it actually wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Down there. All right, people at home, you guys, let's see you guys put your top five up. Let's see what you guys think. Uh, Steve Serapis, who the beer man, in case you guys didn't know him, one of the finest all time offered racers, the only, the only limited car driver to ever win the Baja 1000. 1989,000 in a class 10 car? 85. 
85. Think, my yeah, bad. And I was standing out I knew there it was an odd number. On the side of the road. On the oh, road. check this out. We have it. You, you have that right there? Check this out. Speaking of 1985. Uh, pull this out of our bag of tricks here at the Ball High HQ. So the Ball High HQ is an off-road shop. We have a lot of passion. We built a showroom. We have lots of uh, cool photos, but you probably won't be able to see this. But, oh, I just poked myself. But this is an authentic 1985 Baja 1000 finisher pin. Awesome. Right there, check that out. That's some that's some it's gold an antique. Right I'm an antique. That's Watch right. your mouth, son. That is what they used to look like. You, you know, I used to just go. Set, he gave us a little. Uh, throw them in a drawer. Okay, throw them so in the glove box of the truck. I wish I had them, yeah. all the ones that. That's true. I made it. Steve Serapa says Christian and Troy Herbs racing together, and maybe interested in the number twenty-four starting position. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, there it is. There, there it is. is. Uh, knew it. I like some commission, please, Adam. Thank new, you. Uh, look for a new trucks. Congratulations, Christian Adam. Is ready. They're going to change. Well, actually, that, that, that would make sense because Adam's in a Herb Smith fab Steve, truck. Uh, Steve making a joke. There you go. Uh, Christian is ready to thin the cattle herd. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, also believe, I was talking to Steve yesterday. Uh, like I said, I think it's Christian's first Baja race. So uh, good luck. Good luck. Jason Zendrowski's top five high rev photo. Get some photo. Bink Designs. Mike Wilson photo. <laughs> and then Durka Durka. Ooh, Durka so Durka. That's, that's a good top five. five. That's, that's a solid like top, guys, five. Drop your, top five. Drop your uh, top five. Lucas Hand says, does a class one car have a shot? Not only no, but hell no. No. Sorry. Never. Never. Is that too Never. rude or too straightforward? Never. Never. No, Never I don't think happened. that was uh, rude enough. <laughs> Is that wrong? I mean, at San Felipe, no. he was 40 minutes behind the winning time. Who so won here, San Felipe? It'll probably be more like Justin Davis. Davis. A class Davis. one will be able to win again at score when they let the trophy trucks take the bodies off and go back to class one. <laughs> That's about what <laughs> I'm That's thinking. when it will happen. That's true. Okay, you now we've had a little debate, Andy. I want to talk about helicopters and what is legal and what is ethical Before we get to, and Okay, so wait. Oh we're going to get oh to our boy. top five picks. All of us are going to pick our top five, but you guys start picking pick the your top winner. five. Hold on. And you guys start sharing... Uh, this and we'll we'll do a little rev up. We're gonna. T this is gonna get interesting because uh, Andy might actually punch Pete in the face. So yes. I, uh, <laughs> hey, Andy, I just wanted to tell you here at the Ball HQ, we totally approve of punching Pete. It's okay. Right. Everything yeah. else, no violence. I don't think many people wouldn't. Bring it. Bring it. Kid. Sign the door, man. <laughs> okay, I don't think we need to do top five because. Well, you're gonna talk choppers. Do your helicopter. Oh, now's choppers. your time. Yeah. Now yeah. Your time do Pete. Don't do top five. Hey, we have podium. a question with what is ethical and what is chopper safety and what is bending the rules and what is cheating with chopper assistance hmm. uh i consider anything that gives you an unfair advantage over a guy without a chopper is not legal is not legal in I don't your think opinion it's part of the what's sport. an unfair advantage any advantage not unfair any, advantage. Advantage. even safety gives you an advantage yes yeah, safety's Gives you an advantage. Oh, Safety is wow. mandatory. For wow, me. that's the main yeah. reason I have the chopper. Yeah, of course it is because that's the only reason to have the chopper. Really, especially if you're first on the so road. So what can the chopper guy tell you? If you can afford hey, there's to a... raise a trophy truck, you can afford a chopper. No. Yes, I agree. No. It's an unlimited class. Not true. You should. You I, should it's not a, so to is, be that, able is to. that only the rule for? So it's only for trophy trucks. What if you're a ten guy? Can you have a chopper and do all the same cheater shit? Sure. Yeah, why not? It's it's pretty I open. I thought you just really. said it's not an unlimited class. For class 10. I didn't say that. So class 10 can have a chopper and they can do all the cheater shit too. Don't UTVs have helicopters? They yeah, some do. UTVs do. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Is that legit? Sure. I don't yeah. care. I don't know what you consider che oh, cheater. So if, if, you ask, if you ask me, if you safety. have a chopper and you're racing, oh, and there's, you guys saw the video from Dos Mares, right? Where the guy's coming over the hill in the dust, there's a truck stopped, the guy's getting out of the car, and the guy nails him. If that guy had a helicopter, I think the helicopter has no problem and this should not be against the rule. Getting on the radio saying, hey, there's a truck broken right over the hill That's in front illegal. of you. That's totally Stay illegal. to the left. I would say that Stay would left. be illegal. Something that would be legal. 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 Not yes. Splits. Who's behind you? How That's close a 100% safety that. thing. That would save someone's life by telling them, stay left. Where if yeah. they didn't tell you that and you run into the guy and he dies... Because the helicopter didn't I, say anything. I saw that by that's a problem. Ac I think. Accident. I didn't want to see that, but no. then I heard yeah. it, did, it wasn't bad, right? And then no, he just had like a broken right. leg and a, or a nose. Somebody said he's got a nose and a leg, but he was okay in that well, video that everybody not. saw. But a helicopter would have prevented that if they said stay left. So I think that's so. Okay. You guys think anything with the helicopter, but that's only for the trophy truck class? Any class for safety. For safety, anything goes. But for the trophy truck class, you can do anything with the chopper that you want. No. No. 
People yeah, are going to talk yes. on the people are going to talk on the radio. If you're, if you're a trophy truck driver and you can afford to race trophy trucks, you can you have, a have, to have a helicopter. I said you can have a helicopter. Oh. I didn't say you can do whatever you want with a helicopter, <laughs> but you can you can. Now it's going to get juicy. Getting good over here. So what are you allowed to do with the helicopter? Are you allowed to drive your helicopter over top of other people to warn them that you're coming? I don't, I don't know. Is that in the rules or not in the rules? It's not in the rules. No, no rule. Well, you're I've flying below the deck. That's minimum. I don't go, do you go to the helicopter meetings? I don't go to the helicopter meetings. So <laughs> no, I but I've read the rule say. book. Well, well there's no rule against that. I think, in the book. It's, I think it's a meeting. safety issue that you should be it's able a safety to issue. buzz the bikes. You should I didn't say bikes. The bikes. I said cars. Well, no car's going to get out no. of the way if a helicopter My helicopter doesn't right. buzz any cars. You told me it did. Oh, on a lap race. On a loop race. On a loop race. Limited lapper. Yeah. I think that's okay, too, lapper. Yeah. You just go in front of them and let them know you're there. Which they don't always move, like. In the situation. And it, nowadays, like it's impossible partner. to enforce the helicopter talking to the car rule because anybody can have an MSAT, anybody can be on a code group, and the only thing that you can hear is if you're in that code group. It's impossible for you, Pete. You, you could go to anyone's frequency. They're not on their frequency. You have to have the code group to talk in that group. So the helicopter and the race car in the same code group could talk. You'd never know the difference. So it's impossible to enforce that. There's no way possible to enforce it. So I think you just got to leave it open if there's no way possible to enforce it. But that's not the rules. That is I'm just saying, right. it's, you, it's not, but there's no way to enforce that rule. That's like saying a cop's sitting on the side of the road, you drive by, he doesn't have it's a like, radar gun, he gives like you a speeding NASCAR, ticket. You can't enforce it. If they can sneak around something and find an advantage to win, people do it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's the nature of the beast. And someone is going to do that. it's right. I'm not saying it's ethical. Steve Sarop has big advantage having yeah. a helo. Good luck trying to police that as it will never happen. Exactly. It's impossible to police it. So you better just get on the same level. You can't beat them, join them. Yeah. Mm. There's no way to enforce it. I don't think there's really anything you can do about it. Other I think Lance the helicopter should only be used to avoid an accident. We can talk about performance enhancing drugs enough for racing if you like. I'll take a five hour energy before each race. Sue me. <laughs> so, that, so, Chris says if, if Pete had a helicopter, I bet his outlook would be different. Helicopters have always been a part of racing. Mm. What do you think, Pete? <laughs> I don't think they've always been a part of racing, and I don't think. I think a I like the the idea of Cameron having the trophy truck group where they have one helicopter that follows the lead truck for the safety issue of cars on the track. I well, think that's totally legitimate. 2014, not, I think. Remember, Voss was the first truck on the road, and he got a head-on with the local and ended he his race. Yeah. That did he have a helicopter? If that was me or Luke, my dad would have been like, hey, there's a hel- there's someone back coming backwards. Yeah. yeah. I don't really care what. You think? Yeah, it doesn't, and that's a safety thing at that point. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's lost why everybody's top fives. They're up higher. Can you scroll back to that? Yeah, top five. Like a, you want to do your guys? Looks like yeah, 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 I, it looks like I see children's talking a lot. Hi, yeah. hey, Mike. Life isn't fair. If you weren't Bink born, says, you weren't born uh, in the right uh, family. You can't race trophy trucks because you don't have a helicopter. Bink Correct. Design says Steel, Andy, Rob, Matt, Eve, Robbie, Dark Horse, Billy Wilson. See what else we got up here. Lucas Hans is top five. No, it's not that way, though. Uh, Cameron, four. Andy, Rob Mack, Ryan, R. Sierra, Troy, really? Herbs. Oh, my bad. Give Pete a Snickers bar, Jason Zendrowski says. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Rohan says no. top five He's helos. more of a Milky Way guy. <laughs> top, five top five helos. Top five helos. McCoy, Stevie Wright, <laughs> Icon, and Corporate. <laughs> uh, a good, one. good job, Dino. Top five all have choppers. Gordon hey, I see Joey says something. Is he commenting on my player He's championship top comment? Have top starts, I don't second. think our zero has one. Uh, Rob. What else? Robert, oh, uh, top five finishing order. I'll have choppers. Ivan's Vega, so Andy, funny. Rob Mack, Cam Steele, Abdali, our Sierra, uh, Jason Zinjowski. I think Andy's dimples will win the overall. <laughs> nice. Joey D. Giovanni, Joey D. from UTV Underground, Andy, Rob Mack, Abdali, Rossler, and Bean. Rossler. Rossler, that's, that's a good one. And uh, let's see what else. Pat Daly. Is Rossler even on this list? I thought he was. What happened to that team he was on? Pat yeah. Daly from uh, Daly Engineering. Who I don't knows, know. Uh, oil pumps. For Thanks Mike's for the uh, day off. Because uh, he didn't race San Felipe, correct? <laughs> Rossler did not race uh, San particular Felipe. Order, Andy, Luke, Dan, Rob, M, and Cam. Uh, I mean, most people are just going to pick so. the top five that are on this list. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, that's why I'm saying it. At yeah. the panel here, I Can think we do top six? We got to pick one person. Right. Hey, well, Dan, you know what? You know what I'm picking to win? Pete. Dan McMillan. Thank you. Wow. I think he's got a secret weapon as his backup driver. Maybe it's Larry Rossler. Maybe. Whoa. Maybe. Didn't think, Larry uh, Rossler drive with Luke before? I think these guys up front with their choppers are all going to 
make a mess and <laughs> does Rob have dead. a chopper? Oh, he's gonna have the the PTC one. Uh, Rob Rob has a chopper. The John Marking flies for him. I think. Oh, that's right. Right? Uh, no. no? Oh, oh, I thought he you. does. Oh, John Marking. Well, he'll, he'll have the PTC one. I love John Marking, by the way. He's the one that does a lot of cool stuff for shocks. Yeah. He knows a thing or two. He knows a thing things. or two. Um, all right, so you can't pick yourself. You have to pick somebody else. Okay, so you can't pick yourself. Because, of Let's course, you're all going to pick yourself, obviously. obviously. Of course. Yes. So okay. you have to pick somebody so else. I'll pick Who Andy. Andy picks me. <laughs> 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 I already went first. I picked Dan and Bill. Pick the top five. Come on, have some fun with that. I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll Just go. do three if you want. I'll do top five. I'm going to go Luke one, Andy two. If I can't pick me. Can't pick you. Rob three. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go App Dally four. I think he's he's gonna sneak up, and then I'll just go and Puya. Okay, Andy. Top five. I don't know what I just said. Yep, just, you can't I pick yourself. Do I have names. to give you like first place? No, you can it's pick. up to you. Okay. You can do just yeah. yeah you so Travis says you have to do first. It's gonna be more fun that way. All right, and you do, can't pick yourself. I'll do Luke one. That's two for Luke winning. Rob two, Cameron three, thank you. Dan four, <laughs> F Dolly five. Thank right. you, Andy. That means a lot. I'm just picking Dan McMillan one through five. Dan McMillan never, for the win. I will never pick my old favorite Luke McMillan because he keeps juking us on the show and won't show up. <laughs> He's busy at home yeah. loving his All right, Cameron. girlfriend. Who are you picking? Um, my top five, uh, not including the number sixteen truck. I would go. Uh, Who's not entered yet? Oh yeah, I got, yeah, yeah. got something Can't slippery. If you're not entered, entered, it's now entered officially. Jim and Rob, <laughs> something slippery. Um, How do you guys like that though? That the two slippery entries are now first and second at the 500 as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> if you don't know at home, there was some slippery entry stuff going on at San Felipe, and now those Here two we go. racers are now first and second at the 500. Not, not are you saying they didn't earn it? They did not earn their starting positions at the last race that gave them a big advantage to get first and second. <laughs> I, I want to say Luke McMillan's creeping up on a win, um, but I do think that in this particular situation, not being able to pick the 16, that I would pick the two people that uh, everybody's battling over the greatest of all time. Uh, Rob Mack and Andy McMillan would be in my top two. Then I'd put Luke in the top three position. He's definitely one that I think uh, has an opportunity with the big bumps that are on this course, and I think the tough train, I think that it's going to be um, a, the bigger trucks, the more... Is there a lot of trucks. big bumps on this course? There's, that there's northern a lot that... of big bumps. Yeah, but that, 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 that southern section going down Morelia was big. The north section's not that big, in my opinion. My opinion. Okay. So that was two or that was three? That's three so far. I'm going to um, step outside the, the norm right now and go up Dolly in the top five as well. And I think I'm going to go um, dark horse. A little bit of a dark horse here. I'm going to go with Billy Wilson, maybe. In that. I said that the San Felipe wrap up show, Billy yeah. Wilson, could yeah. Be a sleeper. Yeah, but it just depends. He had a bad alternator problem. I think the problem. The I think truck. the problem for Billy is that yeah. he's still trying to find his feet when it comes to logistics, and, and the 500 is a logistics race. So maybe I won't put Billy in there. I'm going to. I'm going to pull Billy out. I'm sorry. And I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> I just, oh, sorry. Billy, Billy, oh, Billy, Billy, I love you, buddy. Yeah. I have some respect for you. Want me to punch him for you? Uh, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to bring in Dan McMillan, I think, for top five then. I like Ryan Arciero in there, too. I, I think Dan's bigger truck is going to be more of an advantage, right? You're, you got that bigger. They're bigger not going to let right? Ryan Arciero start this race because his co driver cut his armband off okay. again. So. Fish, what's your yeah. top five? Yeah, good start. Um, well, I think for the win, I got to go with Andy. He won of last year. Of course you do. He's 31. He's number 31. He's going to win again. Duh. All right. So Did your hand reach one. this far? I can't see your hand <laughs> under the table. I just go by the facts, okay? <laughs> oh, did I mention, off Andy all did the time. Did I mention he's the GOAT? <laughs> so second, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Luke second or Cameron. I think it's gonna be within within two minutes, I'm calling it. Luke and Cameron. Both within two minutes. I don't know which way it's gonna go. Second and third. Second and third right there. Then fourth. You know, I'm going to go over there. i got to bring the joke back. Yeah, <laughs> going with Dan. Okay, fourth, okay. he's going to be there. <laughs> Within probably five minutes of those two. I think this whole the whole top five is going to be, honestly, within 15 to 20 minutes. The top five. Easily. Easily. Probably 15 minutes. And then for um, be surprised to see the top fifth, five in 10 minutes. 
I don't know who's going to be fifth. I'm just going with those. I don't think <laughs> no Robbie think Gordon in anyone's top. Robbie's starting too far back. Too far I think. Back. He's He's too did, yeah, I, I don't know. True. You you look at this course and I think it's going to be a lot rougher and a lot more destroyed stuff. Josh this is only a burrow. Like, or if the, this race is interesting. It seems like the first half, first two seventy five is a is a sprint, and then you got to be patient in that Mike Sloop. No no mistakes. Uh, to no point, yeah. I think that's why, you know, with, with a lot of good equipment up front and guys with experience, I think that's why the winner's going to come from somewhere right there because they know where to push, they know where to go slow. They, well, they, yeah, they have really good equipment. Obviously, the best in the business. You know, right kind of not the having the qualifying and this result almost makes this a really good starting order, like even better than qualifying, in my opinion, because you have some people that are really, really fast on a qualifying course that can stink it up once they actually get on the race course. But these guys that are up front here, all ran a very fast speed at San Felipe, and they're all going to run a very fast speed. There's nobody holding anybody up right here in this top. Definitely. The not. only thing that's bad is that some of the really fast guys had Being problems at San Felipe. Yeah, back. and they're way down. Yes. But so, the, I mean, as far as the first for the 10, you know, yeah. Those guys that are starting 20. Well, the, that's a good that point group. because, like, if Dali, I'm sure everyone saw the video of him hitting – the bumps off the dump road. Oh my god! Oh yeah, seventy-four miles an hour, and, and then, he was going to win San Felipe. Yeah, and it came back to bite him. Yeah. You know, at the bottom. Yeah, it didn't hold so up. Yeah, he got it fixed. He, he starts twenty-first, and Tavo started back in the twenties before and, and won the five hundred. or got second of the five hundred. So what did happen to Dolly at San Felipe? The underdrive. The underdrive, oh, the exploded. underdrive exploded. That's right. That's, That's what happens when you do one hundred and two thousand sixteen Tavo on the road. Started in the back at the five hundred and one. Yeah. Started behind. He was like 18 yeah. years. Yeah, but you got to look back too and say, hey, did he start way back and everyone else was mixed through the field or was it, was it the seven of the best guys right at the front? It was qualifying. And did they break? Oh, it did have qualifying. Yeah, 16,500 oh, yeah. qualifying. But so did, the, did the top guys that started up front break? And you got to look at the guys that are in the middle, right? Who are some guys that run a decent pace that are going to finish that could hold people up? Kelly Curry says right. uh, number six in the top five, Ricky <laughs> Johnson. Uh, I think there, there's questions that are not sure about. Uh, what car they're driving? Um, Dan actually says, "Pull your feet back, Pete. They can see it through the ball. I just see banner." <laughs> yeah. Ron Stovox, Andy, Rob, Cam, McMillans, uh, mm. Kelly Curry, Team C, Mason Motorsports. Copy four wheel drive or two wheel drive? I thought four wheel drive. So Rob has said four wheel drive. Christian said that. Kelly and said Steve that. Rob Stay in school, son. Six. Laugh out loud. <laughs> And uh, Josh Burrow saying only Brady throws up Andy. <laughs> yeah, Andy, what hotel you're staying at? We got to make sure we get Brady, Brady sick. And, uh, and this will be a tough race for the four wheel drives, only because it's long, and if you're pushing really hard, I think have the four wheel drives been tested to make it over 400 miles? Pushing, right. Right. pushing. Right. I mean, they can drive around that far, but pushing it. Testing, testing speed. is never the same as racing. Never, right, never, never, ever. That's why we took yeah. the seven truck out to the Silver State to find out fuel economy. You know, we found out that we won, but there was only four entries. But I still don't think we got the great fuel economy because we we had some issues. So we still got to work that out. You know, but the testing is never going to be the same as racing. Right. Rick just said they drove the four wheel drive of Matt Neese and won the race, and then they went and drove it another 125 miles, and they let Rob Mack drive it, which he's amazed with it. But still, question—he still questions the reliability. reliability. Will it live at full stick? I think Justin Matney is not super wild. So, but then you right? get a guy, that, guy like Jones, reasonable? who has a four-wheel drive, and he's not really racing it because he wants to wait until Jones. they figure the bugs out. Because he doesn't believe in it either. Jones householder would be a good one. Mm. Yeah, that's Man. somebody that would I don't take think the Jesse's spot. Racing the 500. I think he's watching. I think he's just helping AJ. Right? Yeah. AJ and, and Bryce, yeah. All right, so we're going to start What about the Australian kid? Is he coming back to race the 500? I, he's racing no. the Fink, I think. He yeah, oh, the he is. Weekend, yeah. 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 Yep. So I don't think he'll be back for that. But hey, he's a really nice guy. Toby's, Toby's a great, a great guy. guy. Yeah. He's, he's one of the a gem in our sport, for sure. And he appreciates your hair, dude. He likes the mullet himself. He's, he's got the look. It's, yeah. And uh, I'm just going to say <laughs> I that uh, I like to see uh, Ricky Brabeck win the Dakar, even though I like Toby Price. I like to see the America win. <laughs> Well, when about. are you headed down to pre-run, Cameron? Uh, I'm going to hold my pre-run until a little bit later. I'm actually going uh, to ride some dirt bikes in the next couple weeks, but uh, I don't think I'm going to pre-run until that last week. I'm going to send some of my boys down for some logistics, um, but I'm not, I'm not in a giant hurry to get down there. I'm going to let everybody else run in the course because they like to make all the lines for us. It makes less work. Hmm, wonder how. Yeah, I pre-ran in San Felipe the Friday before the race, yeah. and I pre-ran it. And my dad the day before? Wednesday, and there were still lines developing 
you know, yeah. up to the day before the race. So. Right. Any more I'm questions? Uh, Any more race. good questions? Let's, let's get a couple last questions on that thing. Uh, well, I think, think oh, they're going to be a separate four wheel drive and two wheel drive trophy truck class. Do you think, think they'll ever someday. separate them? Someday, I think that's a possibility. Two and four wheel drive classes. Uh, I don't think any time in the next three or four years. Yeah, I think it's five plus years out. Yep. Um, so eventually, the answer is we think eventually. Fish, thank all your sponsors. Oh yeah, we want to uh, thank uh, Toyo Tires for uh, sponsoring this, and uh, we're going down with Andy like we talked about earlier. Um, we're going to go pre-run. We're going to make some cool pre-run clips for you guys of the actual course and also um, some spectator areas where we think you can safely spectate and actually see some pretty cool racing and some areas where you're not going to want to spectate because it's not a good spot to be. So uh, we'll be going down there a couple weeks before the race and then the week of the race, uh, probably starting on Tuesday after Memorial Day, uh, every day we're going to release uh, one or two clips on uh, on our Facebook and Instagram with uh, showing what we were down there doing. So you guys are definitely going to want to uh, check those out. Thanks to uh, Fox Shocks and uh, Toyo Tires. And uh, they should be pretty cool. It should be cool to see some of the actual course. And you can buy those Fox Shocks and Toyo Tires here at the Baja HQ. Feel free to come on by anytime. We're doing uh, any kind of upgrade you want to your off-road truck. And uh, thanks to all my great sponsors for supporting us going racing. And thank you, Fish, for making the effort to yep. uh, make this happen. We're getting some other questions in. Uh, uh, Wilson Class 1 in the top five. Do you guys think that the Wilson Class 1 can no. be in the top five? Overall? Yes. Top no. No. The answer is no, maybe. Doug. Top 10 overall possibly. Top 10 maybe. Been some, a couple comments. Have a bike guy on next time. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, I think Tim Morton would be a great addition to our panel as well as maybe yeah. a current bike guy. But Tim Morton's about as switched on as anybody Agreed. in the sport. And I think that uh, he'd be great to join us here. Um, you know, I, I, looking at it, uh, why no Nora for us just wasn't in the card. Sorry, we couldn't be there. Are you still hosting the pageant at Mike's? Uh, <laughs> oh, that, oh. <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. You guys want to do Wednesday night at Mike's? We haven't done that in a while. It's a little late, <laughs> in, the no qualifying it's a little late in the week to be drinking that much alcohol before How about Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday night? Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday night? Are you going to be down there Tuesday night? <laughs> Duh. I'm going to be, I'll be somewhere down there. I'm not sure if I'll be at, at Mike's. Well, can you aim for right. my <laughs> What's wrong? You're afraid to wear a dress? No. No, I'm perfectly... Your dad almost won the pageant. No, my dad. Your, my dad. dad. Oh, oh no. Dad. It wasn't Scott. <laughs> no, no, no. I still have some of the uh, parts that he used. Randy for. Wilson, when you showed up. Randy Wilson was Decked out. Out. For everybody that doesn't know, it's all these guys Amazing. that dress up. In we dress. Unbelievable. We Unbelievable. I couldn't win that contest. Best in show, Randy Wilson. Yeah, some people uh, getting a yes on Tim Morton. Yeah, 100% Tim Morton. Uh, the... Leader in Baja Tour Guides, the leader in uh, knowing off-road racing on bikes, I think. Very switched on guy. Um, yeah, okay, Tuesday night. Oh, I see. Saying, uh, what did Adam Householder say? What did uh, Adam? Did oh, you I said right on, guys. Always great to watch. Don't oh. forget Don't forget our uh, 10%, Adam. Yeah, Adam, don't forget our commission here. We, uh, Serapis wants to take your spot there. So add a little extra that on the top. That is not a bad idea. Look at that. I mean, really on Fishistics Live, we make dreams come true. We make deals, you make deals happen all day. You're starting from, if, if, you're, really if you're seventh yeah, off the line, you are in great shape. Robbie Gordon would be a good one to do that. I don't think Robbie will give it up under his name. That's what we were thinking. Because you have to go with no, Adam he will. He will, because he used to know. do that. He used to enter his navigator yeah. and in the race. But that was to get multiple spots, right? Yeah, but still, that that would be the name. Robin won 1,000 or 500 one year in 1990. Yeah, yeah she's on the record books, right? Yeah. yeah well, let us know, Adam, if you make a deal. Keep the us whole updated. Thing. That's where Cameron learned it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they came into this thing together. Hey, you guys right. like the Baja HQ uh, page? Uh, share this. Watch Pete's Truck Night in America. Yeah, tonight, tonight, thanks for coming tonight out, Pete. And every Thursday night on History Channel is Truck Night in America. And what time? Uh, it's all different times. You got to look at your schedule. Seven or ten. It's on History Channel. <laughs> and then uh, we just announced a season two, and I'm. Going back to the secret location uh, to shoot a whole bunch more episodes. And casting is open if you want to be on my show. Can I, can I truck make the trophy truck? Yes. Cast, truck Night in America, casting.com. Anything is allowed. Anything Jerry goes. Larimore was supposed to be on season one, but he blew up his motor like in the middle when we were shooting down there and he couldn't get it fixed. In a two-wheel drive, he was going to be on the show. So anyone can be on the show. What do you think? Should I bring the, one of the trophy trucks? Absolutely. Absolutely. Go do it. Why not? All right. Because they don't you know, be hate scared. Me, my other hosts on the show hate me because we're so much. Are you going to pick that. him though if he comes on the show? <laughs> when you guys get to pick your driver, hey, are you going to pick, pick, pick him? Pick I don't want to okay. say this out loud, but I'm going to. I think there's just a lot of reasons to hate you. I, <laughs> 
Why? Oh Such boy, nice here we guy. go. You are. So are you? Oh, are you, I want to well, you're, spell, you're, you're spelling in grammar online. Night? Am I, is that what you're saying? Yes. Are you I'll be there Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, why do you have so many rings on your finger? They're for all my kids. Made them in the shop actually to remind me to be a good boy. And this one's from Cowboy Bob. My mother took it off him, and I put it on immediately. That's cool. When he no. died. That's, That's cool. Way. Your dad's yes. wearing. Yes. We missed him. I like that. We, I like that. Dad's a and, great guy. And another thing I wanted to talk about that we missed is uh, pit safety. Please have everyone in fire suits and helmets with a neck and gloves when they're fueling in Baja. Fuel apron. I know we don't have rules in Baja, but we had a couple guys from Mag 7 Pits get hurt really bad at the Nora race. And uh, please go on Mag 7 and you can donate to help them. A couple of Mexican guys that are donating their time. Yeah. And they were working for Mag Seven, but for free. They're volunteers, and they got burned up pretty bad at Nora. And as a reminder, you guys, them, you're uh, do. you're in the middle of a third world country, in the middle of Baja, where landing a plane or a helicopter at times, a plane for sure, landing a helicopter is very difficult in a lot of the areas that we're in. You can never be too careful. Always be super safe. Always be super cautious. And practice. Expect practice your pits and home. Yeah. Don't park next to the highway. Don't let people stand next to the highway. I mean, use your brain cells. If it do, if it seems like a bad idea, it is a bad idea. That's if you're in a spot getting. where the trucks are going super fast, anything can happen at any second. So always have plenty of room between you and the track. 100%. And like we yep. saw at the Mint with the U-Theory truck, where they jacked it up and the guy shook the front bumper and it fell off. So if you're going to jack up your truck, yeah, jack stands, be careful. And if you're in a race truck and you have a problem, get the hell off the track. And if you can't, wait to get out of your belts until you can see that it's clear to get out. Because if you're going to get hit, at least be buckled in and have all your safety stuff on. Yeah, Way better than getting just out. Just like a co- having a Cody Parkhouse. Eric yep, Clay you saying, sure. uh, if you, uh, the Stella feature, push your triangle if you're stopped on the race course. Agree. So other vehicles Because that does come up all the time. All the time. I like, push hey, the there's Stella there's angle. The, the Stella unit was there. fantastic we, at we, San Felipe. Uh, just at the Vegas Reno, I mean, all a lot of the units are good. But, yeah, that was really clutch to have there, the racing tracks there. But the Stella unit has been really good. Really good. Really, really big fan of the Stella unit. One other thing. So, yeah. uh, if you want to donate uh, to Jake Petulis' family – or to the guys that got hurt at Nora from Max Seven, you can send your checks here to Baja HQ, and Cameron will make sure they get to the proper people. For sure, there and they go. both have GoFundMe pages. Yes, uh, feel free to go there if you want to reach out through social media. You can uh, reach out to Pistogistics or uh, Baja HQ or any one of us uh, through messaging or direct message, and we'll get you whatever information that you need, anything to help the families. And uh, we're going to wrap it up here yep. from the Baja HQ. We want to say uh, God bless. Uh, to those that are no longer with us, a, a special thoughts with uh, Jake's family. And uh, we're all thinking about you guys. And uh, be safe out there, everybody. Um, have fun. And uh, just enjoy enjoy life. Enjoy every single day because tomorrow's never promised. And thank you for getting some real chairs in here. I really appreciate that. You got it. <laughs> I really appreciate right that. All right, stay tuned. Right before the race, we're going to have some cool clips for you guys on Fishistics. <laughs>